Hello everyone, welcome back to our session. So now we're just going to continue what we have left off from the first chapter. And uh, now today we're going to talk about some of the origins of agriculture in relation to human civilization, all right? Uh, so the most important um, event on uh, is where's the discovery or the innovation uh, of agriculture in the whole of human history, all right? And now let me take you back to 100,000 years back where our ancestors were just gathering and hunting for the survival, right? So at that point of time, they would just go about from places and places and they would uh, start um, hunting the animals or wild animals or uh, they would gather for food, they would go foraging and go for berries or food grains or anything they could possibly find or eat, right? So at this point, this was during, I would say this would be during the Ice Age time, right? And we can see that this was one of the longest period, right? And right after this, people started, uh, evolution all started. And as time went by, due to some, uh, I would say, um, the climatic conditions also started changing. And, and that's where the whole world as well changed, right? So the whole geographical uh, geography of the world changed. So this, after that, then comes the pastoral, okay? Uh, so before going further, I would like to remind you guys that in origins, when we're talking about the errors in agriculture, uh, basically there are four main errors, okay? The first one is hunting, where they haven't discovered agriculture or nothing. And then comes pastoral, and then comes crop culture, and then comes trade. So we're going to need to discuss uh, a bit in detail about these errors, all right? Uh, the second one comes is pastoral. So the, once they started gathering, they started realizing that they can still, they can actually domesticate those animals instead of migrating or going from place to place to place, right? So at that point of time, which made it very difficult for them also because of the scarce of food, how much would they hunt, right? The food was uh, scarce for them. So they started domesticating those animals. Uh, like well, dogs, they started domesticating dogs, cows, and buffaloes, and everything, which can provide them some food, uh, and as well as uh, they would provide them some milk and other uh, amount, other power, also the power as well, so they could get it from them. So this pastoral, uh, remember, guys, what happened here is that uh, cultivation of crops. They haven't discovered this cultivation. They haven't domesticated the crops, but only they domesticated those animals. All right. And after domesticating the animals, they weren't uh, settled in one place. They would still migrate from place to place and place to place. So this is all about this pastoral, all right? And uh, this was back around 100 years ago, right? And then comes this pastoral. And now let's go to crop culture. And uh, as they uh, started realizing, as they started domesticating these animals, they also started realizing that Instead of foraging for uh, food grains or berries or other um, plants, they could actually uh, domesticate those plants and those crops and start growing them and start um, using them for their own food, right? So here in this crop culture, people or the humans at that time, they started realizing that they can domesticate. So here they started settling, okay? So Humans, they started settling in places because once they dom domesticated those livestock as well or the animals or the crops, they do not have to go out and search for food, right? So then comes the settlement. So at this point of time, these uh, humans, they become more sedentary, right? Instead of going from here and there, they became sedentary and they, were, they got more uh, food security in that area, all right? So here, domestication of plants started. They basically started settling down near the riverside where they would get enough water for their plant, for the crops or for the livestock as well. And they would uh, start producing their own food and so they don't have to migrate, right? And then comes trade. Uh, in, this tra in this era, what happened was that uh, they realized that the, there was an excess of food for them, right? So what to do with this excess of food? They started trading or giving out to the other people. So in that way, uh, some people, they started, some humans, uh, they started trading. They would be growing, suppose, for example, person A would be growing some uh, uh, rice, right? And the person B would be growing wheat. So they would start exchanging those 
uh, two products were produced from whatever they got. And so that's how this water system started and then money flow also started. And at this area only this industrialization also started. So people beca became more economically sensible, I would say at this time, right? And, and that's how this whole um, origin of agriculture started basically here. Commercialization also started. So the impact, what you can see here is that um, the population at this hunting age was um, say about around 7 million, all right? And here, right after the introduction of agriculture or discovery of agriculture, the population also rised drast like drastically to about 25 times, right? For example, this was around 10. And 25 times, then it'll be around 25,000 million people were there at this point. So this is all about the origins of agriculture. And this can actually tell you how important agriculture is in human civilization, right? So uh, let's go move on to the next slide. All right. Um, Guys, this slide is also very important. So we're going to talk about the list of agricultural revolutions which occurred in India. All right, so we're going to discuss uh, a bit in detail with the more important ones. And we're just going to discuss roughly or briefly, uh, which are not that important. All right, so the first one here is Green Revolution. The Green Revolution is the most important as you all know, in the whole uh, revolution of, or the in whole history of agriculture, right? So before the introduction of this green revolution happened, India was basically, it was in self-reliant. Uh, India would uh, go for importing the food grains and the agriculture products from outside, right? So, but the, but the population of India was also rising, right? And there was food scarcity. And to meet those needs, um, it, they started off with this green revolution where they would um, um, make India a f from a food deficient economy into the most of the world's leading uh, country in the world of agriculture and food grains, right? So this has a really huge impact on the agriculture's history. So this basically started in the year of around 1960s, right? But it was actually commenced in the year of 1966. Okay, so in the whole world, towards if you're moving towards the western side, this was already going on, right? So this at uh, the term, it was a green revolution was always started by Norman Borlaug, right? So uh, in India, it was M. S. Swami Natham. Okay? So he was a scientist, an agronomist. So he started this idea, and then he pitched in, and he started off the Green Revolution in India, and that's why he is also known as the father of Green Revolution, right? So this Green Revolution, the basic features of Green Revolution would be they started producing these high yielding varieties of seeds, right? There was introduction of these uh, mechanization in agriculture activities, as well as improved um, um, irrigation facilities was also provided. And there was an introduction of these chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Soon after this, modern technologies were introduced. Uh, the agriculture production also drastically changed. It actually arised up, right? So that's way this green revolution is really important in the history of agriculture, right? So the main significance was that the there was, we could see the change in India's agriculture from subsistence farming to more towards the commercial farming. All right, I hope this is clear. And now coming to the uh, white revolution, all right? So in white revolution, uh, this is also known as Operation Flip. All right, so this was actually inspired by looking at the success of green revolution, all right? So this was followed up by after green revolution. So it was during the year of around 1964 to 1965, see? So at this point of time, there was an introduction of this program called the Intensive Capital Development Program. 
Okay, so this uh, development program was basically for the uh, cattle owners to uh, uh, implement or get or, or uh, make them pro get provided with the package of this improved animal husband, right? And soon after that, around 1970s, uh, the wide revolution of the operations flood program it was initiated, right? Uh, to fasten up the speed, all right, to speed up the whole process. So they wanted the um, India to be the leading uh, world, a leading country in the production of milk, which is even right now, India is also the largest producer of milk, as you can see, um, right? So the main motive was to increase the milk production and also to double the farmer's income during this time. Right, so important. Uh, we need to understand that how much milk is important. If we didn't have uh, milk, uh, if we didn't have my revolution, we wouldn't have that almond milk that you guys drink today every day, almost every day, right? So, and that's why this white revolution became really important. Another uh, thing that you need to remember here is that uh, this white revolution uh, it was followed. It was done by the sponsorship of this national uh, by this national dairy development. Board, okay, and the director at that time for this uh, board was Bernice Cohen. And Bernice Cohen was a director, and that's why he is also known as the father of White Revolution. All right, I hope this is clear. And now moving on to Black Revolution. So Black Revolution, it is related to, to petroleum, all right? So to increase the petroleum production in India, the government, they started uh, mixing or they started to accelerate the um, production of petroleum, uh, production of ethanol especially, and they wanted to mix it up with petrol, and which once you mix it up, it would be a biodiesel, all right? So this, Ethanol is also produced from this plant basis called molasses, right? And these mixing up of this ethanol with petrol, it was already done uh, 70 for about 70 years in the Western countries like Brazil as well as USA, right? So they were doing it and India also wanted to be more, uh, India also wanted to do this as well. So and that, uh, so that's one of the reasons why they adopted it. And another important reason was that uh, because of the scars, to combat the scars, uh, scarcity of these hydrocarbons, they started forming this mixture, right? So that's how this petrol, uh, this plant revolution started. And also, uh, it was more environmentally friendly as there were lesser pollutants, right? So this was the major impact of the Black Revolution. And now going to a uh, Blue Revolution. Right, uh, blue revolution uh, deals with the country's fish production. All right, so uh, as you all know, that in the half of the uh, lower part or the South India, these are all uh, it's a, this is the peninsula India, right? And a lot of farmers stay there, and that's to them, fish farming or is the primary objective or the primary source of income right and this blue revolution is also known as the neil Kranti mission all right and this neil Kranti mission it was started and therefore to increase the income of the fish farmers as well as to improve the national national food security as well as the nutritional security of the country all right and once this uh, blue revolution started there were a lot of um, fishing harbors were also created in the south of india like Baisak, which is also known as Vishakhapatnam, they also have Port Blair, Kochi, all of this, they all started forming after Blue Revolution, all right? So what they did was that uh, first they were, in, they introduced new modern technologies such as breeding, right, rearing as well, and they also focus on marketing and lastly, export, right? So the father of uh, Blue Revolution is Dr. Arun Kishan. Right, and because of this blue revolution only, uh, India today is the world's leading uh, country in fish production and number two in aquaculture. 
All right, so these are some of the major uh, points that you guys need to remember when you're going to you guys study about the revolution. Another one here is golden revolution. All right, so golden, sorry, golden fiber revolution. Yeah, so golden fiber revolution basically um, deals with jute, jute production. So uh, jute cultivation was wide and it was predominant in the southeast of Asia, right? And also in India, if you come into our country, then undivided Bengal was the highest um, state or uh, in the production or cultivation of jute, right? So the landscape or the soil or the climate was such that it was very congenial for um, growing of this jute, right? So even this British East India colony, uh, East India Company, also they started of this jute production in a commercial way all right so they would make products out of jute and a lot of for example like jute bags and even they started making this paper out of jute right so this was oh, but right after the partition of bengal most of the jute uh, jute industries or the jute area they went to bangladesh and that's why when uh, after the partition of bengal jute was the industry in jute was a bit stagnant in India, right? And so there were more problems in the cropping patterns or in the cultivation. They started facing a lot of um, uh, uh, problems in the market as well, and especially in the mills as well. And so that's why the uh, government decided off these golden fiber revolution to increase the production and market of jute in India, right? So, so till now, uh, West Bengal or Bengal is still the leading producer of jute, right? And this also made India um, the highest uh, or the largest producer of jute in the world, right? So this is something about golden fiber revolution. Another term that you're gonna come across is also golden revolution, okay? So don't get confused with golden revolution and golden fiber revolution. Uh, golden revolution, uh, it deals with horticulture products or honey, right? So this actually started in the year uh, from 1991 to 2003. So this, era, this period, during this period, this uh, golden revolution took place. And so uh, till the early 1990s, India was more focused on uh, giving out or cultivating or producing only the food grains. Right or the cereal grains, but right after the introduction of these golden fiber revolutions, so they wanted India to um, diversify their uh, crop cultivation. They wanted India to try out different types of uh, fruit crops or other crops, right? So which would give them more benefit, more return. So they started this golden revolution on horticulture uh, crops, all right? And this because of this golden revolution only, we can see that India is also the the largest producer in bananas and mangoes, coconut, cashews, all those fruit products till date. Um, the father of the Golden Revolution is Nirbak Tutej. Okay, and the uh, so the horticulture was in the priority for India, right? But after this, the horticulture became more of the priority to India. All right, so the Indian government as well. And that's how the production of, uh, right now, the, even the production of Indian horticulture is also high, all right? And now let's go to uh, the Great Revolution. So Great Revolution basically deals with fertilizer production. This was basically um, uh, formed or made so that they could surpass the, um, the limits or the, uh, the demerits of the Green Revolution, right? So these only deals with fertilizer production and pink revolution it deals with onion production or you can say corn production as well and these are not that important so just knowing the names of it would suffice for the exam okay and even the red revolution it deals with meat production or tomato production um coming to round revolution it deals with potato production and silver fiber revolution deals with cotton production um, going to silver revolution, it is egg or culture production. So the person associated with this uh, silver revolution is Indira Gandhi. And um, yellow revolution is 
deals with oil seed production. Um, so this happened around the year of 1986 to 1987. Okay. So two major crops, two major um, um, edible. So they wanted to increase the uh, production or cultivation of these edible uh, seed crops. All right. So the main two was. Uh, the introduction of the hybrid mustard and sesame seeds. Right, so these were the two main crops, and they also wanted to focus on the um, other nine oil seed crops, such as groundnut, sesame, uh, sunflower, safflower, castor, linseed, um, mustard, as well as soybean. All right, so there are major nine oil seed crops that they wanted to focus on these and in, uh, increase the production in these crops as well. So this was basically done for in, number one was to increase the production. All right, and as well as to make India self-reliant by itself so that uh, they won't have much of import from other countries. Uh, the last one here is Evergreen Revolution, guys. So Evergreen Revolution, I would say, it emerged from Green Revolution only, all right? So the basic features that I would say uh, about Evergreen Revolution is that uh, after the, after the introduction of Green Revolution, there was an intensive use of chemical fertilizers, right, and excessive use of irrigation and farm mechanization, and they promoted kind of like a monoculture in the whole of agriculture. So, but they did not know what the problems they would face in the future, right? So because of that, there were a lot of environmental, uh, it was affecting uh, the environment as well, right? The soil was polluted, uh, it was affecting humans' health as well. And um, mon monoculturing wasn't going good because uh, it would actually uh, have a drastic impact on the environment again. Uh, another point here that I want to stress is that this African Revolution, it actually checks on all the uh, ecological aspects, uh, right? As well as the social aspects of of everything and they combined it and they wanted to make the a revolution into a more holistic way uh, but going for the highest production yet checking in the ecological and maintaining the balance actually of ecological economic as well as social socially all right so this is what evergreen a revolution is all about so the drawbacks of this would be the advantages of this evergreen uh, revolution, right? So these are some of the um, revolution. These are actually the revolutions of a, uh, agriculture, right? So these are very important. I hope I jotted down some of the important points for you guys. So try to remember everything, right? So main point that you guys need to remember the re -re the revolutions as well as the products where it is related to. And if there is a person associated with it, we will try to remember the person as well, okay, the name as well. And just having a rough history, rough um, knowledge on the on the history or why it happened and the main features of this revolution is more than enough for the exam, right? And um, that's all for today, guys. We are going to continue with our another lecture, all right? And I hope uh, I make this lecture clear for you all. And we'll be meeting for another session.